This video focuses on basic cognitive behavioral assessment techniques. The first step usually involves helping the client to describe his or her sense of the problem and as many hot thoughts as possible. The hot thoughts are cognitions that occur immediately before and during problematic episodes. In the first three vignettes, you'll see clients who've come to therapy to work on depression, anger, and anxiety, respectively. Sharon has felt increasingly depressed over the past eight months. The man she lived with for five years moved out and subsequently ended the relationship. She now finds dating disappointing and worries that she may never find an appropriate partner. She also feels stuck at work where her boss is critical and demanding. Sharon, what brings you in today? Uh, well, um, I, I guess I'm here because uh, I, I haven't been feeling very well. Um, um, things are not going very well. Uh, uh, I, just, I don't feel good. When, when you say you're not feeling good, what is that feeling? What, what kind of feeling is that? Um, I, just, I feel really down all the time. You know, really, uh, I guess you'd, you'd call it depressed. I guess, I, I guess I'm depressed. Um, and I, I just seem to feel like that all the time. Is this something that's been gradually coming on, or is it something that started with an event that kind of set you off? Um, I guess you could say there was an event um, about eight months ago. Um, my boyfriend, who I'd been with for a really long time, five years, just he first he moved out, and then he completely broke off with me. And I just, I mean, I never have felt all that great. But since then, things have been really bad. So that kind of started the, the depression rolling. And yeah. now at this point, you're feeling pretty bad most of the time. Yeah. OK. You know, I wanted to ask you, as you're sitting here right now with me, if you could give me a sense of how depressed you're feeling at this moment. Uh, if, we went, if we had a scale from zero, feel just fine, to 10, just the worst, most crushing depression imaginable, where would you be on that scale? Um, it, well, it's not, it's not terrible right now. I mean, I would say like maybe four. Uh huh. Something like that. It's around a four. Okay. Let's think a bit about the past week. Are there times that stand out in the past week where you felt particularly down? Um. In the past week. Yeah. Yeah. Um. When was that? Well. Last week, earlier in the week, um, you know, I thought I would really like to meet somebody. Uh -huh. No, I, mean, I, I don't want to be alone. Uh -huh. And um, you know, I have friends who've who've gone out with people by looking at you know those personal ads, mm -hmm. you know, like in those those free newspapers. And I thought, well, okay, you know, I I could do that. And I started looking at some of these ads, and you know, I saw a couple that that looked interesting to me. Um, I don't. I don't know what happens. I just. I just start to get more upset. Now let's go back uh, and see what was going on at that moment. When you were looking at those ads and you saw a couple that looked kind of interesting, what were you saying to yourself? What were your thoughts at that moment? Um. What were my thoughts? Well, like I was looking at this one ad where um, this guy was describing all the bands he likes, and they're, they're bands I like. You know, like my, my previous boyfriend was a musician. So I really love, 
music. And so he was going, you know, in this ad about all the bands he likes and, and that he's this energetic person and that he's mature and, and um, you know, fun-loving and he, he likes running and all this stuff. And I thought, that sounds really good. And then I thought, why would somebody like that want me? You know, I just thought, you know, nobody's ever going to want me in a relationship. You know, like, as soon as people get to know me, you know, guys, they're just, they're going to see that. Okay, so one of the thoughts was nobody's going to get to know me. Yeah, that, they're not going to want to. You know, I just feel like I'm never, I'm never going to find a decent person, you know. You know, because I think that somebody who I would like wouldn't like me. You know, they're going to think I'm boring. I don't have anything to talk about. Sharon, when you're telling me about what was going on that night and the thoughts come up that no one might want to know you, uh, that you might be, not be able to find anyone decent. I'm wondering if we went back to that scale, you know, on the, on the zero to 10 scale of depression, where would you fall right now? It's funny, because I know that was only a couple of minutes ago, but God, it feels like I'm a nine now. Uh-huh. So when when those thoughts come into your mind, the depression shoots way up. Yeah. That's important for us to remember for later, that those thoughts actually have a lot to do with the depression. I'd like to continue talking a bit about the week and any other points when the depression felt strong. Um. Well, you know, after I, after I read those ads, um, I just thought, okay, I'll put it aside for a while. And, um, like, I think it was like a day later, I tried to write an answer to one. I thought, well, okay, I'll just give it another try. Uh -huh. And I picked one, you know, the guy that likes all the bands I like. And I tried to write this response, you know, and I tried to describe myself and, um, I just, I just got really stuck because um, I thought, you know, I don't have anything to offer anybody, you know. Um, you know, it's like maybe I used to do some interesting stuff, but I feel like I don't, I don't do anything anymore. And um, I thought, you know, here's this maybe great guy, but when I try to write stuff down, it, there's nothing there, you know. What's your picture of the future at that moment as you're trying to write down? That um, I should just face facts and that there's like something wrong with me that nobody would really, really want to be involved with me and that I'm just going to have to adjust the fact that I'm, I'm sorry. Um, like gonna be yeah. alone. So when you look into the future you see yourself alone. Okay. And then when that thought comes up, how does that make you feel? It's just terrible. Uh -huh. Sharon, when you think about yourself how do you seem different from the person you want to be? Well, I feel like the person I am now is, you know, just boring. I don't have anything to offer anybody. And the, the way I, I wish I was, I wish I was somebody who would just have more self-confidence. I wish, you know, I could feel like I could even hold a conversation with a guy. You know, and I'll feel like that now. And I wish, you know, like I used to do more stuff in my life. 
and I don't anymore. And, and I wish I was someone who was interesting, who, who did things, you know. I, I, I don't do anything anymore. Okay. I hear you. So it feels like there's a big leap between who you are right now and, and who you really want to be or feel like you need to be in order to make a relationship work. Okay. Are there any other things that are going on during the week that affect you and, and bring your mood down? Yeah, I mean, there's all this stuff about work, too. I, um, I work in this small furniture factory. Mm -hmm. like I, I do um, re refurnishing furniture. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I'm, I'm always feeling like I'm just going to screw up, you know, that I, j I can't get things right, that and there was a situation yesterday where this other guy works on bigger pieces than me. Like I, I just work on like chairs and like end tables and he does the bigger pieces like sofas and he finished this piece and the boss made this big deal about how nice it looked, you know, and everybody looked at it. And I I mean I I know I should have been really happy for him, but I just felt I just felt really down. Yeah, and what were you saying to yourself at that moment? That, you know, like for me to kind of graduate to the bigger pieces, I, there's some other things I have to learn how to do, and I just, I don't think I catch on very fast, and I just feel like I'm too stupid to figure things out, and, um, and I just, I don't know, I feel like my work looks bad sometimes. And, and when you say those things to me, those, when you, when you describe those thoughts, I don't catch on, I'm too stupid, does that affect your feelings right now? Yeah, yeah. So again, those thoughts, just like the thoughts about looking at the relationship ads, seem to really change how you feel, really drive your mood down. Yeah. Sharon, what are you losing out on or, or missing in your work life that you, that you need, that you need a lot? I guess, I guess I wish that I would be able to do my work and, and look at, you know, the finished product and, and feel good about it, you know, feel proud of what I did, you know. But it seems like I never feel like that. Mm -hmm. So you really want to take pride in your work? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I want to be able to say, I did this job and it turned out the way it was supposed to and, and I did what I was supposed to and, and, you know, I've created something beautiful. And instead, you say to yourself, "That looks terrible." You know, you know, one of my other coworkers could have done a better job, and you know, his piece looks so much nicer, much more even than than my work. You know, my stains look terrible. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So a lot of self-critical thoughts come yeah. up then. Yeah. Okay. Sharon, so far, we're learning quite a lot about the thoughts that are affecting you, both thoughts that affect you in terms of feeling ready or believing it's possible to be in a relationship, and also the thoughts that are affecting you at work. Um, thoughts like, uh, nobody wants to know me, or when you think at work that uh, this looks terrible, anybody else here could have done it better. Those thoughts are really, really pulling down your mood. They're having a huge impact on how you feel. And our job now is to roll up our sleeves and really begin to do something about the thoughts that are making you depressed.
Notice the key questions to uncover depressive automatic thoughts. What does it feel like you're losing or is missing from your life that you need very much? What do you see in your future? When you think about yourself, how do you seem different from the person you want to be? Jean comes in today concerned about anger outbursts with her eight-year-old. She also wants to understand and change a pattern of habitual bickering with her husband. So, Jean, how are you this week? How have things been going? Well, work is much better. Work uh -huh. is great. In fact, I think it's time to move on. Uh, I think I told you about the problem I was having getting angry at my family. Yeah, a while back. Well, this week, I just, it was just awful, especially with my daughter and my husband. It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh-huh. Not so much with the baby, but... No, the baby's fine. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let, let's, let's work on that. Think back during the week to a situation where you had a particularly intense moment of oh. anger with Yesterday your daughter. Morning. Mm -hmm. Yesterday morning. When? Yesterday morning, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, what happened? Um, she was hiding in a closet playing with her Barbie dolls, and I was running around trying to get her ready for school, trying to find her. And um, we ended up being late for school. Okay. So, you know, on a scale of zero to ten, where, we, where was your anger? And how, how high was it at that moment? Oh, nine. It was really. Oh, I was far just the chart. furious. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Now, just try to put yourself back in the situation. Can you, can you see it? Oh, yeah. yeah you can yeah. see yourself running around the mm -hmm. house and looking and calling. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what are you saying to yourself? Remember how important thoughts are to mm. uh, feelings and how often they <sighs> intensify and create feelings. What are you saying to yourself as you're moving from room to room calling to her? Well, um, primarily that she's just a self-centered little brat and, you know, she doesn't care that I'm going crazy running around looking for her. Mm. And, I mean, I was going crazy. I was worried and I was furious and, uh, and she didn't care. Um, now, when you found her in the closet, um, what were you, how did you perceive the situation? What was your daughter doing um, that seemed wrong and deserving punishment? What? Well, she knew we were going to be late. She could hear me yelling around the house for her, and she deliberately stayed in the closet. That's a really key statement. She knew we were going to be late and deliberately stayed in the closet. So it felt to you like she was deliberately causing you this upset, this oh, painful yes. situation of mm -hmm. rushing and worrying mm -hmm. and so forth. Okay. Because that really triggers intense anger, that sense that someone is doing this to me deliberately. Okay. And we need to look at that later and find out a little bit about uh, how deliberate it is and uh, explore that thought. But for now, let's just understand what you are saying to yourself mm -hmm. that's okay. setting off the anger. Uh, now, is, was there any other situation with her this week? Yeah, oh yeah, there were, there were a few. Um, on two occasions, I remember uh, her just running around the house refusing to go to bed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when that's happening, and she's but what does she do? She, she runs away uh, from you? Oh, or? yeah. She runs away. If we carry her into the bedroom or if we, you know, lead her back into the bedroom, two seconds later, she just runs right out again. Mm -hmm. Drives me crazy. Okay. I know how it is. Mm. Um, so... And then there was another. There was another incident as well. That with... Not it, with bed? It was something else? It was something else, but it was kind of similar. We were going to get in the car and go to visit her grandma, and she just ran away. It's the same kind of thing. She just okay. took off. What were you saying to yourself in those situations? How did, what, what was going on inside uh, the trigger thoughts that were setting off the anger? She, she's becoming a tyrant. She's, she's, 
She's a little tyrant. She runs this house. She doesn't care about what I need. Now, when you say those, those words right now, uh, what happens to you? Oh, I can feel my stomach tense up. Okay, so just oh, yeah. merely repeating to me what you were thinking then, you can feel yeah. the anger rising oh, yeah. in you. Yeah. Okay. So we know then that those words must be pretty potent. Yeah. Because if, if, if simply repeating them here is enough to mm -hmm. set it off, they... Well, and I can see, I can just see myself chasing her and feeling stupid and helpless and... Uh -huh. So now we're getting a line on the kinds of thoughts that are triggering your anger at her. And we're going we're gonna to do some work on those in a little bit. But let me kind of check in with you about your husband. You said there was some anger mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there as well. Yeah. What during the week? Well, we had a really big shouting match one night after he'd spent the whole evening playing with those damn trains. With, you know, with he trains, has that. I, I think I told you he has a whole model railroad thing, oh, yeah. and he just spends all his time up there. And it just, he's just they're just running around on the track, and he's yeah, he's got a room for it, and um, he just loves it. Uh -huh. And so he just, you know, dinner is over, and he's up there, uh -huh. and it's you know, he might I might as well not be married, is how I kind of was feeling at the time. So. It, was that one of your thoughts? Oh, I don't know if I really thought that. I mean, I, I, I felt that, I felt that many times, but I don't know that I really thought that at the time. Let me ask you this question. What's your husband doing that seems like, you know, it's a deliberate choice to cause you pain? What, what's he, what's he doing that feels like it's deliberately so. You mean other than that he can see I'm about to wash the dishes and get the kids ready for bed and he heads up the stairs? I mean, you know, it seems like the whole thing is a deliberate choice on his part to leave me with all the work. Okay, so is that what you're saying? Is that he's sort of deliberately leaving you with all the work while he goes and has fun? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I end up doing everything then. Uh-huh. What else are you thinking at that moment when he goes trundling off to uh, run the trains. What, what other thoughts are in your mind? I don't know that I'm really thinking anything. I mean, I'm, I know I'm feeling furious. Uh-huh. But... Okay, well, let's see if we can get a line on that. Can you go back into that scene? He's already kind of disappeared up the stairs. He's been up there for a little while in the, in the, with the trains. You're busy getting the kids ready for bed and mm -hmm. doing things, keeping the house together. Now, I want you to kind of visualize that situation. You're, he's been gone for a while. You're moving around, doing things, getting the kids ready, tending to the various mm -hmm. issues and tasks of the evening. And now, do you have that pretty clearly mm -hmm. in mind? All right, now we're going to roll the camera backwards. We're going to go backwards. Just like we're watching a videotape, we're going to go backwards all the way back and back past even the point where he gets ready to leave and go upstairs. Continue to roll back. Back to the very first moment when you started to get angry. Back to the very first thought you had that started to trigger your anger. Rolling the tape back, continuing to go backwards now. And when you reach that first thought that triggered the anger, just take a deep breath. It's a little fuzzy. Mm -hmm. but what, what are you, what are you well, hearing? What are you, what are you hearing yourself say to you, uh, in, internally? There's something about kind of wondering if I'm going to see him tonight, or you know, there's something about 
just just kind of that expectation that he's probably going to go up again. And what about that? What about that is upsetting? What, what's, what's he doing that's wrong and deserves to be punished? Deserves to be punished. What's, what's he doing when you're stuck wondering if you're going to see him again? What's he doing to you that's wrong and deserves punishment? Well, I guess right at that second, not really anything. I mean, he's just, usually that starts, we're sitting at the table having dinner and I'm kind of just expecting him to Oh, I see. So already up. before he leaves, you're wondering yeah, when, he when he's going up. Uh -huh. And what feeling does that bring up for you? Uh, some kind of resentment. Mm -hmm. And what's the thought that goes with that resentment? Wondering if he's going to go up and, you know, maybe... Sort of he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And what's the it? Leave me. He's going to leave you again. Mm -hmm. What happens when, when you say that to yourself? He's going to leave you. I feel my stomach again. Uh-huh. What does it mean to you when he leaves you? When he leaves you to go upstairs? What does that mean? What is he doing to you? Well, you know, I feel like a widow to that stupid hobby. I mean, just... He, what does it do? It leaves me with all the responsibility. I mean, I'm tired after a day's work, too, and I'm stressed. And he doesn't care. He just goes off and does his fun stuff and leaves me with everything. Okay, so the, so he's going to leave you and he doesn't care? And he doesn't care. What happens when you use that phrase, he doesn't care? I get upset. We're starting to get a line on what's creating this very intense anger reaction. Mm -hmm. And it is time to roll up our sleeves and get to work on it. It sounds like it's pretty serious. It's a big problem. Yeah. yeah. Notice the key questions. What does your husband or daughter do that seems wrong and deserves to be punished? What does your husband or daughter do that seems like a deliberate choice to harm you or cause you pain? Simon is struggling with mounting anxiety about his health, even though his doctor has found no serious medical condition. Simon, what brings you in today? Um, I've, I've been experiencing some uh, anxieties um, about my health, particularly a concern about my, my heart, my heart rate. Um, and. It, I feel that I, I'm vulnerable to a heart attack. I've, I've been to the doctors and they, they keep assuring me that my heart's fine. But, um, uh, but I experience a, a rapid heart rate. I sometimes have a, a pain that begins here and goes down my arm. And the doctors have said that that's really just the, the residual effect of a, a whip, whiplash injury that I experienced. But I, I'm more concerned that it that it has that it has something more to do with my with my heart. So that's the the reason you're here. You're you're wanting to. Well, it troubles me. I, I worry about it. I I uh, I have a, a lot of anxiety about uh, about that condition. And okay. I, I'd like to get to the bottom of it. All right. Well, let me ask you, Simon. In the last week, have there been periods of time where that anxiety peaked where you really strongly felt. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, um, well, on one occasion I, I, I had finished mowing the lawn and I, you know, when I got in the house my, my heart rate seemed to be very rapid and building up and I, I, uh, um, I became very concerned. Uh -huh. What were you thinking and at that moment what, what was in your mind can you remember and go back to that that scene you're just coming in the house you your heart rate is up you you finished well, the lawn what, uh, what you yes say? i i uh, i sat down and, and immediately i um i i felt anxious because I, I felt my heart rate increasing i i was warm i was perspiring and uh, and my heart was beating and i thought oh my god here it goes again uh, here it goes again. And what, what, 
What did that mean, here it goes? <laughs> Just that, that, uh, that I've experienced this a number of times when, the, when, the, when my, uh, my heart starts pounding and, uh, and it just it doesn't seem to stop. It, it At that moment, what feels like the worst thing that could happen? Well, I, I'm afraid I'll collapse, I'll, I'll, that I'll just slump over and, and uh, there I'll be. Mm -hmm. There you'll be. You'll, you'll have a heart attack? Uh, yes, yes. Are there any experiences that you've had in your past that made you very sensitive or concerned about uh, your heart or, or about suddenly getting sick? Well, I, I, uh, I always remember that my, my father died of a heart attack. He, he, was, uh, uh, he was skiing, actually. He was out on the slopes. Uh, he had a heart attack, and, and before anyone could, could get to him, he was, he was gone. Okay. I, uh, I, I find that I'm, uh, I'm particularly um, anxious about being far away from home or, or in an isolated place. I, uh, um, what do you oh. say to yourself when you're far away from home? Well, I... Um, well, for instance, uh, uh, before last Christmas, I went out to one of these rural <coughs> uh, Christmas tree lots where you, you walk around and find your, your own tree. And, and suddenly I realized, here I am out in the middle of the, this grove of trees. No one knows I'm here. And, and uh, I felt my heart rate increasing. And I, uh, God, I just stopped and I leaned against a tree. And, 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 uh, um, and I thought, <laughs> Here it goes again, and, and there's no one around, and I, uh, I just forgot the whole thing. I, I went right back to the car. I drove home and uh, told my wife that it happened again, and uh, I just got in bed. Yeah, and here it goes. There's no one around, and then that means what? What is well, it? Well, it means that I'm helpless. I'm completely vulnerable. I, if my heart decides to to uh, to just run away with itself, um, there's no help at hand. Oh, I see. So you feel like you're a long way from anybody who could really provide yeah, real, real yeah. medical care. Are there any other situations that have occurred recently where you felt uh, a, a peak of anxiety? Uh, we've talked about that situation when you were mowing the lawn and, and then when you were... Well, sometimes... Uh Oh, it, it happens sometimes at home, particularly if I if I'm home just alone. But, but even even sometimes when uh, when my wife is there, I um, <clears throat> oh she had started talking about uh, getting away, uh, uh, getting on a vacation. Uh, friends have a cabin that, that we uh, we could have access to, and uh, and as I thought about that uh, of being away uh, that far away from. Uh, from civilization, I um, I became ver very anxious, and my my heart again was uh, was uh, acting up, and uh, so we uh, uh, we didn't talk about it. Anymore. And your, and the thought was, as you imagined well, going away again. Yes, I just uh, <clears throat> I was terrified at the idea of being being that far removed from uh, any any contact with the outside world. There's no phone there. So you were afraid that you'd get in trouble, uh, if you had a physical problem with your heart. Well, and sure. I, uh, um, um, there's a certain amount of. of uh, I mean, I wouldn't. You know, I suppose if we went out there, I'd I'd want to be out and get in some hiking or walking, and and. Uh, but I'm just afraid that uh, that with any exertion, who knows? Yeah. When you think about your future, what? What, what are you afraid might happen when you, when you just look into the future? What do you see there? Well, I, um, I just feel sort of captive. I, I, uh, I don't do a lot of the things I used to be able to do. Uh, I don't even go shopping much anymore. My wife, my wife does that. Seems that I um, don't see uh, old friends as often as I did. I just don't. 
Um, I, I, I don't like going out. I don't like uh, getting away from the house that so much. So when you look into the future, you just kind of see yourself closing the doors on your life and just becoming more shut off, shut down? Uh, yeah, I feel that I don't really have a life this way. I, I don't really have a life. You know, I think the anxiety you've been experiencing about your heart and about your health has a lot to do with some of the things that we're talking about right now, the thoughts themselves. And we're going to explore that a little more. But there are a lot of very potent thoughts that create anxiety. Here it goes again all collapse, the image of your dad being on the slopes far from home and the memory of, of what that meant, uh, the, the thought that there's no help at hand, you're helpless, um, far from the outside world. All of those thoughts have the effect of raising your heart rate, making you feel more uh, vulnerable, more alarmed. And it's these thoughts that could be having a big impact on the anxiety and on the symptoms that feel like heart trouble. So it's something we need to explore. All right. Notice the key questions. What are you afraid might happen in the future? What's the worst thing that could happen? The session with Simon now continues through a longer PAC assessment. PAC is a three-part assessment protocol that defines the problem, the antecedents, and the consequences in a presenting issue. Having learned about some of the emotional and cognitive aspects of the problem, the therapist now explores any specific behavior associated with the problem as well as physical sensations contiguous with the problem situation. Now, let me ask you this. When you have one of those bad moments where you're concerned about your heart, you're feeling anxious, what do you do? How do you, how do you cope with that? Well, I, uh, I just withdraw. Uh, I stop what I'm doing and uh, and I usually just go to bed. Um, I, um, I, I never have these feelings, actually, when I'm in bed. Um, I feel uh, more rested, more secure, I guess. So it never happens in bed, but um, when, when it comes on, your immediate reaction is to is just try to be quiet yeah. and, and yeah. lie down. Yeah. Is there anything else you do to to cope at that moment? Well, if, I, if I'm out of the ho house, I just get back to the house and, uh, and try to relax. So you try to get home just as soon as possible? Yeah. Then. OK. Now, you mentioned that um, there are some pretty strong physical sensations that your heart rate goes up, uh, you get pretty warm, you begin perspiring. Is there anything else that goes on well, I feel a little sort of uh, uh, electric sensation down down my back, down my spine. Um, uh, do you have any thoughts about that when you feel that electric sensation? Is, is there? Yeah. Well, it's 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 uncomfortable. I it's un, uh, um, it, uh, it's a little frightening. Uh -huh. What do you think it means? Well, I I think it's a. Um, I think it's a warning signal uh, that, that my heart's uh, uh, mm -hmm. It seems like it has something to do with what's going on with your heart. It's a warning signal that your heart is I, I think so struggling or having trouble. okay. Now the therapist explores the antecedents, the conditions and circumstances that seem typically to proceed or coincide with the occurrence of the problem. Questions focus on when in time the problem occurs, where, after what, and with whom. Again, there are questions about emotions, thoughts, 
behavior, and sensations. But the focus this time is on what occurred just before a problem sequence. Um, let's go on now and talk a little bit about what's going on just before one of these episodes occurs, just before you become kind of anxious and, and concerned about your heart. Um, I want to get a line on kind of the circumstances that lead up to one of those uh, spells. Is there any time of day that this is more likely to happen than any other? I don't think so. It can happen unexpectedly, almost any time. Again, except when I'm actually in bed. So it doesn't happen at night? No. no. Um. Okay. And is there a situation, you know, where you're physically present in some in in some situation, like you're, it's more likely to happen at home, or it's more likely to happen uh, away from home? Uh, it's more li likely to happen in the backyard, or. Oh, I, I think it's it probably happens most often at home, but I'm home much of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it it also tends to happen if I'm if I'm in an unfamiliar place somewhere, rather far from home, sometimes driving. Yeah. One of those situations where you feel like you're a little far from help. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Is there anything that might typically be happening just before one of these uh, spells? Is there any, any anything that's going on that that sometimes leads up to it? Now you did mention that you were mowing the lawn. Is there? Well, sure. Uh, any any any. Uh, strenuous activity. If 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 I uh, oh if I've if I've uh, if, if I've walked down to the the corner store to pick something up and 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 I'm, uh, I'm in a hurry to get home. Sometimes uh, when I get back to the house, I uh, I feel that my heart's agitated. Mm -hmm. So anything that might raise your heart rate, any any kind of exercise. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that? sometimes occurs just before one of these episodes? Any kind of problem or situation uh, uh, that comes oh, up with another person? Possibly, if, if, oh, if there's some uh, disagreement with my wife, for instance, it, it might, uh, might prompt it. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular kind of a disagreement that would, would be more upsetting than, than others? Well, if she feels that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not getting things done around the house, or, or again, if she, uh, she starts pressing to, uh, to get away, to, uh, to uh, get on vacation somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you feel pressured to do something, to to get in, get busy, do work around the house, or, yeah. or to leave and go someplace. Yeah. Pressure from her will sometimes Usually. set the. Okay. Now, is there anyone other than your wife that this happens with, where you where you feel these uh, symptoms, any anxiety? Well. Yes, sometimes, sometimes. Uh -huh. I, uh, um, uh, but I don't remember a specific instance. Um, this is, it's kind of rare that it would be with someone else. Yes. And it happens alone also? Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Is it, is it happen more alone or more with your wife? I, I would think more alone, mm -hmm. actually. Okay. Are there any emotional experiences that might lead up to the anxiety? Not, not the, specifically the anxiety about your heart, but 
is, is there sometimes an emotional context or something going on where you're feeling some uh, uh, emotional reaction of some kind that, that might be go occurring just prior to one of those spells? Um, possibly when I'm uh, <clears throat> just when I'm I'm feeling pressured if I if I feel that I'm uh, I'm not getting things done <clears throat> that I that I normally would or uh, or that something's expected of me that I. Uh, that I'm not aware of or not, not dealing with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, it's that sense of pressure and, and some sense of anxiety that yeah. You've, yeah. you've got to respond, you've got to do something, you're expected to do something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are there for you any thoughts that might be going on prior to one of the episodes? Not just during the episode, because we've talked a little bit about what kinds of thoughts occur then where you uh, have concerns and here it comes again and I'll collapse and uh, feeling like you might be far from from help but those kinds of thoughts occur during the episode but are there thoughts that sometimes occur prior to an episode that might possibly have some bearing or have something to do with the with the lead up to the anxious event oh I uh Yes, sometimes. Uh, uh, well, I, I sometimes I think about the fact that I'm getting older and and that uh, my health <clears throat> doesn't seem to me what it used to be, and and I um, um, and again I I remember my father. I I think that uh, uh, I could very well suffer the same uh, the same problem with my heart that he did. Um, are these the kinds of thoughts that might be going through your mind, uh, say, before going out to mow the lawn or go before going down to take a walk to the store, or are there other thoughts that might also be in your mind then? No, I, I think before I undertake things like that, I, I may be feeling more positive. Uh, Mm -hmm. Do you worry about exercise before you get involved in it? Do you worry about mowing? Or? Sometimes, sometimes I do. Uh, sometimes I'll begin something uh, without thinking about it and then realize that, um, that I'm feeling some strain, some exertion, and, and, and then I stop and think, should I really be doing this? So the, so the experience of exerting and doing sometimes will, will bring up thoughts even before the anxiety about uh, your heart. It just, oh, yeah. It just yeah. I, I'll, I'll stop and consider sense of vulnerability. Whether, uh, whether I should be uh, stressing myself uh, that uh -huh. much. Uh-huh. Okay. And we've talked a little bit about what might be going on in terms of what you're, you're physically doing uh, before one of the episodes uh, you said going mowing the lawn going to the store are there any other things that you might be doing uh, you implied maybe a conflict with your wife uh, sometimes uh, kind of fights or conflicts lead up to one of these well we don't really fight but i i think that um she does she does press pressure me to uh, to do things or or to get out to get together with friends um uh, and um I, I seem to be resistant to that for some reason. And we talked about some of the, the physical sensations that go with uh, the worry about your heart, feeling hot, uh, feeling your heart rate go up, uh, and that electric sensation. Are there any physical sensations that might occur before any of the, the, the real anxious episode, uh, are there any things that might kind of set you up for that episode that are there, you're noticing that are happening physically for you? I mean, for, for, 
example, feeling more tired or, uh, uh, or, or perhaps feeling hot on a, on a warm day or... Um, oh, I tend to feel uh, just tired and, and uh, a sense of exhaustion, uh, drained. And, and of course, there's the, 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 the physical, the pain I told you about that begins here in the neck and, and goes down my arm. Uh, that's, that's there, usually. So that pain is there uh, very frequently when, when you have one of these anxious very often, episodes? Very often. Uh, would you say that 60% of the time you have the pain? It, it turns well, into one of these things. At least anxious. half the time. I at think. least half the time when that pain is going on in your neck and, sh and shoulder and, and arm, it, it eventually leads to one of these episodes. Yeah. And the thoughts yeah. that go with that pain are... Well, I, I associate that with, the, with, with, with my heart. I, I just think that that's a, a, a precursor to... Uh, Now the focus turns to what happens after the problem occurs. The emotions, thoughts, behaviors, and sensations that a client experiences in the wake of the problem sequence. Also included are interpersonal consequences, how relationships and interactions change, and new indications of avoidance. Consequences are often maintaining factors that can reinforce and support the recurrence of the problem. Now I'd like to kind of turn our attention to what happens afterwards. The, the aftermath, uh, the, the, the consequences for you of some of these episodes, these anxious episodes. Um, after you've kind of calmed down and some of the, the worst of the anxieties passed and your heart has slowed down and you're perhaps you've, you've rested for a while. Um, I'm wondering what you might be feeling then emotionally. What's happening then? Oh, I feel, uh, I feel sort of that I'm, I'm a victim of this condition, that I'm, I'm uh, always vulnerable. Um, because I can't uh, really prepare for it in any way. And uh, it just, I feel that my life is, is constrained, restricted. Um, and that it's, sometimes it seems like it's just not a life at all. And what, what is that emotion? What is that, that feeling? Oh, it's... Uh, when you're aware of being constricted in that way, uh, a victim of the condition. What, what's, well, what is the feeling? Frustrating. I feel frustrated and and uh, and depressed. I see. Yeah, it's hard. I can see that. And are those the thoughts too that that go along uh, with the aftermath? Uh, just the sense of uh, your life is constrained. Uh, and constricted, there's no life at all. Are those the thoughts that might be in your mind at, yes. at that point, say laying in bed or just getting up after yes. after resting? Um, are there other thoughts that are in your mind as you get through one of those episodes and you're a little calmer? Oh, I, well, I'd, I'd like to change it. I, I just don't know how. Mm -hmm. Doctors seem to... Uh, have no have no uh, no advice. Mm -hmm. So, is there a specific thought about wanting to change? Or well, I I thought I needed medical help, but uh, they tell me that it's uh, not a physical problem. That's why I'm here. I see. So, some but some of the thoughts then in the aftermath are. How can I get the medical help I need? Is that yeah. yeah? Okay. What do you do then? Uh, you've rested for a while. Your heart rate has slowed. You feel a little calmer. What happens then? 
Oh, I, uh, I read or turn on the television. So you do something rather slow and uh, kind of sedentary. Are there any physical sensations that are left over in, in the aftermath of one of those episodes? It's not specific. Uh, a sort of sense of, of uh, what, frailty, weakness. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens with your wife? I mean, are, are there consequences for the two of you when you are going through these struggles and worries about your heart. Uh, what, what goes on between the two of you as a result of that? Well, um, I, I think she tries to be sympathetic, mm -hmm. but um, she doesn't really understand it. She knows, too, that the doctors have said that, that uh, my, my health is good. And uh, I, think she, I think she's impatient sometimes that I, uh, that I have these concerns. Mm -hmm. So she's impatient. How, how does that get expressed in your relationship? Well, she's, she's, not, she's not a nagging person, but, uh, but I sense her frustration that we're not, uh, that we're not doing things that we used to do. Uh, we don't see our friends so often. And yeah. We don't get out. Is she taking over some of your responsibilities at home? Is she yeah. Doing? She, uh, 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 she does the shopping. She uh, takes care of the house. She even suggested mowing the lawn, but I said, no, no, just leave it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get to it. Uh -huh. So she's kind of jumped in and handled some of the things that you used to handle. Yeah. Uh-huh. And what about friends and family? Are you as close to them as you were before these problems occurred? No, no. Uh, most of the family have moved away. Um, uh, and uh, I don't, well, we just don't seem to be in contact as much with our friends. We, uh, Is that something that's happened since these episodes began? I think so. Uh huh. So you're kind of pulling back a little bit. Yeah. Uh huh. Is that because of that feeling that if you're away from home, you may not be? Yeah, close I, to I, I don't like uh, stressful situations. I don't like to be where there are too many people, too uh -huh. much noise. I see. So that's another thing that might be a trigger for you. Uh, situations where there's stress and noise and a lot of stuff going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Interpersonal. Yeah. Uh -huh. So in terms of how you're handling this now, are you finding yourself tending to avoid things that once were a normal part of your life? I think so. Uh -huh. and, and that includes some of the friends that you used to visit and some of the tasks at home? Yeah. Uh -huh. This has really had a big impact on you, hasn't it? It's really been a... Yeah, it's, it's uh, slowed me down a lot. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for us to start using some of the information that uh, I've learned and get to work on changing those anxious feelings. Because we can change the anxiety. We can make a real big dent in that by changing some of the thoughts that have been in some cases literally creating the anxious feelings and not only creating the anxious feelings but affecting you physically increasing your heart rate and giving you the some of those sensations that feel like heart trouble so we've, we've got some work ahead of us but there's something we can really do to change how you've been feeling